compared to some for two of the circumstances, I now have the ability to sous vide. One of which, the sealer plus the sealing bags. I now have these in my arsenal so I can seal up my steaks. The other thing I have, well, unfortunately, we actually lost an instant pot machine. So I had to find another one online and I got this one from Kosuri because I love their air fryer. So I want to check out their instant pot. And their instant pot or pressure cooker, as you might also call it, is a very good one so far. There will be reviewed later after I've tested it more thoroughly. But one benefit that this instant pot had over the other one, it has a sous vide feature. So we're gonna try out the sous vide feature. So since this actually needs to warm up the water first, I put some water in here. Now we're gonna turn on the sous vide. Three hours is not gonna be enough, or at least not the way I'm doing it. So we're gonna put up to four hours. Uh, then you hit the sous vide button again so you can change the temperature. 134, it's a nice medium rare, but we don't want 134 because happy healthy wife likes a little higher, a little warmer than that, a little more done. So we're going 145, not 146. So that's the temperature we're gonna do and we hit start. So now it's gonna start heating up. It's gonna preheat the water inside. And to help it out, what they also ask you to do, so actually cover the pot. and have the vent open. So that way it's gonna heat up faster, I hope. So we'll see how long it takes to heat up while I'm getting the steaks ready. So I got some Costco steaks, New York strip bonus, so I can do some little experimenting with sealing them. And so I also got this sealer and these out of air bags, which have sealed them very nicely. We put them in the freezer after we sealed them, but we didn't just take them straight out of the freezer. No, that wouldn't work for sous vide. You gotta let them refrigerate first, come to refrigerator temperature. And you do that by setting the refrigerator for two days about two days or so, and then it becomes ready. So I'm gonna have to open up the bags and take out our wonderful sticks. So these are gonna be sous vide. We're gonna do a couple grilled, see which ones we like better. And so then you will know, do you wanna have steak in a sous vide, or do you wanna have a barbecue? Now we're gonna do two sticks. Why are two sticks here? And I'm only taking one out because we're doing them at two different levels of doneness. You have family members, probably I have family members who prefer a well done or medium or medium well steak. And we have others who prefer the medium rare, rare steak. So this one's gonna be cooked to a medium doneness. That's why it's at 146 right now. So I have taken it out of the bag, going to salt and pepper the steak. And garlic powder, the three ingredients for our regular standard steak. Now I'm gonna flip it over and do the exact same thing. Be generous with your salt. That's where most of the flavor in your steak comes from. But we're now for to get this ready for the sous vide. So now my steak's, <laughs> steak, steak is all seasoned. I'm gonna get the bag ready. Take our wonderfully seasoned steak. Oh, sounds like the water bath is ready. Now for a sous vide, you want to vacuum seal your meat. We're gonna vacuum seal it. And now it's ready for the sous vide bath. We're at 146, we've opened it. Now we're gonna stick in our steak. So here it says it's set to 146 degrees Fahrenheit. If we look and we see the steak, has definitely gone sinking down to the bottom. It is now cooking sous vide style. We're gonna let it cook like this for an hour and 30 minutes. We're gonna close the lid again. Make sure it is set to vent so that we can let the water escape. 146 degrees, it's gonna cook our steak sous vide, at least. That's what we hope. So what you do is you let that steak cook for an hour and a half of the higher temperature. And that's gonna become a medium to medium well steak when we're done with it. Now in order to cook the other steak at a nice medium rare, the way Happy Healthy Daughter and myself prefer them, we will then cool the bath as quickly as possible using some ice bags and get it down to 130 so that we can then put in the second stick and cook the second stick for an hour and a half. Leaving them both in there for the second hour and a half. That way the 146 steak still keeps warm while we're cooking our 130 steak. And then we'll take them both out and finish them up 
with a torch. Woo! So now half later and I can smell the steak. Let's take a look and see how it looks, shall we? Oh, let's take a look, yeah. It looks like it's pretty well cooked. Probably a nice medium. So we are now going to cool it down in there and get our sous vide to a lower temperature so that the next steak will become medium rare while keeping the current steak in there a nice medium. Okay, so we're gonna cool it down in there by using these ice packs. This will cool the water down inside so we can drop the temperature nice and quick. So let's put those in. At the same time, we gotta change this temperature. So that's two hours and 13 minutes ready to go. So 146, let's drop that temperature down. To 130, hit the start button. Hopefully we can drop the temperature down, um, but it's hard to know whether this thing's down at low or not. So we're gonna use a thermometer. If this thermometer is a good indicator, we've already dropped it down below the required 136. Let's take them out. So now that we cool down, we're gonna put the lid back on so we can heat it back up to the 130 that we wanted to. In the meantime, we can prep the steak. Time to season it up, just like the other steak. chilean is done and here we have the second steak ready for the sous vide bath the steaks are one on top of the other now we're going to my sous vide mentor guga we are going to cook this for an hour and 30 minutes and what's going to happen is i have the steaks going to cook them going to be done i'm going to bring them out they're going to rest for their five minutes like you should do after cooking a steak on a barbecue while they're resting I'm going to be taking the sous vide steaks out and then blow torch them. So let's get these steaks ready for the barbecue. So these steaks are put in the freezer using the out of air bags, wonderful bags they are. And we can cut them up, cut them open because I put two steaks in one package. So once I cut one, there they are, two steaks ready to be processed. So remember, so this was in the freezer, in the airtight vacuum sealed bags in the freezer. Then I took them out and put in the refrigerator for two days to capture them up to refrigerator temperature. Now we're taking them out and getting them ready for barbecue. Now that we need to prepare the steaks. In the same way I prepared these steaks, there's no difference in how they are prepared. Perfect time. So you see now the sous vide is done. So let's take a look at how the medium rare steak looks. Looks fairly nice. The steak's here ready to be cooked. The sous vide is done. So let's hit the barbecue. We'll start with the steak that we want to have medium. Flipping time. About a minute in, a minute and a half. Kind of flip it. Some grill marks are going, that's fine. Another minute has passed. Time to put on the medium rare steak. So don't get too charred. About every two minutes, flip the steak so they don't get too charred. Another two minutes, another flip. Again, trying to make sure they don't not get too done on any one side. So now 
Now this is supposed to be the last loop for this one, two more minutes. And this one should be a great doneness. This one. Another two minutes and hopefully that's more of a medium well. Woo. So there we go, the eight minute steak. And the 11 minute steak. Take them inside. Now the barbecued steaks are done and smell delicious. So let's take care of the sous vide steaks. Let's go ahead and turn it off, take them out, pat them dry, and give them a crust. So this one here is supposed to be medium rare. And this one, if you look at it, there are more juices out of it than the other one. So let's take another wrap and pat them dry. I right, just, I feel this one does feel more done. This is much more soft. If you look at it, I can press into it a bit. So a few things I've learned. Garlic powder is the enemy to a good char on a steak. Fat chars really well. That if I was truly going to char my steak, I would not use this torch, or I'd use a bigger one that was faster. I would use either a skillet, the broiler, or the barbecue. But I didn't want to mix up the barbecue flavor with the barbecue flavor to see if we like sous vide as well as just barbecue without sous vide. Now that I have charred this one well enough, the medium one looks well charred. That looks good. Yeah, the medium rare one could look better. But once we cut them up, you might not really see the char anyway. So let's go ahead and cut them up, starting with Mr. Medium. Uh, we do want to slice them against the grain. So I put that one slice down the middle, so then I could go against the grain. And as you look at the one that said 140-ish, you can see it looks a little medium. Let's see, this is supposed to be medium rare sous vide. Let's see what it looks like. Cut it open. Hmm. Kind of looks medium rare. Well, let's slice it up for consumption. Now I'm gonna pair that to one with direct, really just straight off the barbie. The nice medium rareness I usually get. So now it's time for the taste test. So let's see, we're gonna start with this one right here. All right, remember I tried to do two different donuts, and this one's a little more rare than that one, but it didn't work out so well. But we're gonna start with this one right here, and we'll see what she thinks of this steak. I think it's very tender and flavorful, and it has good meat flavor. Wonderful. It just tastes like my usual Saturday night steak. The edges like fall apart when you eat them. Mm, okay, good and flavorful. Same as always, not much difference. Uh, so let's try the more rare one over here. Is it a different flavor? No, they're all seasoned the same. It tastes a little different. It does taste a little different. It's still very tender and good meat. I think I taste more garlic powder and pepper in this one. I would tend to agree. There's definitely a much more pronounced garlic powder flavor on this one over here. I like that one. You like this one? Better than that one? Why? Just tastes better. Tastes better. Doesn't know why, but tastes better. So this one, you know, you wouldn't say any difference really for tenderness, right? Both about the same tender. Except the one I cooked more is less tender. But flavor-wise, this one, I said is more smoky flavor. She liked it better. This one definitely more garlicky flavor. And this one was cooked using the sous vide bath. 
So it's easier to control the doneness of the steak. You can see these ones are more medium. These ones are more rare. And that was because they were cooked at different temperatures. If you look at these ones, I had a tough for time straight from the barbecue making rare versus medium. You know, I was just kind of guessing. So this takes the guesswork out of doneness. But this one, when you cook it on the barbecue, it adds that smokiness to it. Adds a better flavor. And there wasn't really much difference in tenderness for the cooking of the steaks. So if you're doing sous vide, at least in this experiment, tenderness, not an issue. Just a matter of, do you want it done the right way? And if I had taken this steak and then put it on the barbecue, there would probably, you couldn't tell any difference between the two, honestly. This one might still have a little more garlicky flavor, but it would add the smoky layer that this one got, but you wouldn't really notice any difference. So to sous vide or not to sous vide, Ah, this really matters how much time you got, how much time you want to spend sous vide. Do you want to make sure your steaks are done to the right doneness? Because that's like the cheat code to get to the right doneness. Flavor-wise, you're not going to see much difference. But, you know something that goes great with steak? What? Mashed potatoes. Oh. And if you want to see the best mashed potato recipe, just click on this link right here. To sous vide or not to sous vide, that is the question.